Good morning. How's everyone doing out there today? Hopefully everyone is having a great day. I am doing outstanding today. Got my coffee and I got this 2012 Ford Fusion with a 2.5 in it and customers complaining that the check engine light is on. This is like my new bay. I work outside now. I like it. All right, so I'm just gonna do a code scan quick. I'll get you the results here once it's done. Oh, geez, the amount of EVAP problems I've been seeing. I don't know if this is just the time of year, but whatever. Anyways, we've got a 446. A 446 for the uh, vent control circuit on this system, and then we've also got the large leak. So let's uh, start looking at some data and see where we want to take this. Quick readiness monitors check just to make sure everything is completed. And according to this, it is. So we're good there. All right, just a quick peek at some freeze frame data for this 446. Just wanted to kind of let you guys look at everything. And that way you guys have an idea um, what everything was reading when this code set. And, you know, it's always good to look at your freeze frame da data because it tells a story. Um, and I think I was watching um, a video um, from Real Fixes Real Fast one time. Um, I already noted this, the um, vapor pressure of 34. I was watching that video from Real Fixes Real Fast and he was talking about checking your freeze frame data and that the answer is there. You just, you just got to know where to look, you know, and you'd see we we're in open loop, um, five seconds on startup. So this is clearly on the startup, but getting back to what I was saying is, is, you know, the more you look at this stuff, the better you get at, um, the more familiar you get with the data and you can start seeing problems with it. So, you know, that's kind of my habit. Just look at it. Um, and just kind of take a peek at what the data is. And um, you got to do that on multiple cars, you know. It's really all, all it comes down to. Um, you can see number of warm-up cycles since the DTCs cleared was 255. And the distance since cleared was uh, 18,000 miles. Um, there is a 126, 736 on this car. All right, so let's keep moving on. I think the next thing I want to do is I want to go into, from my main menu on the engine, I want to go into functional tests. Um, I'm going to go into output controls. And I'm going to see what bidirectional capabilities I have. And you can see I can do the canister purge valve percentage. Um, I can do EVAP canister vent valve on and off. And um, those are going to be the two I'll probably use, or I will use rather. So since we have a 446 for the vent control circuit we are concerned about the control of that vent valve so i think what i'll do on this video is we'll kind of change it up i'm just going to go to a wiring diagram and i want to look at you know i want to look at the solenoid and see how it works all right guys so i've got the wiring diagram up for this 2.5 this is not a hybrid so um here's our evap canister vent control solenoid it's a two two wires right uh, one's gonna be a power and one's gonna be our ground one's gonna be uh, most likely ground side switch to turn the um, solenoid on uh, we got a white red and a green blue um, so let's follow these down see where they go I'm just gonna pick one we'll follow the um, white red and they come over you can see our green blue goes to number three on the previous diagram and our white red goes to seven. So we're looking for seven and three on the previous diagram. And I'm going as quick as I can here. I know it's hard to do when you're looking through another screen to a screen. So three and seven. Here's seven. So let's follow seven. And you can see seven comes to a splice. So right away, I'm already uh, going. This is probably my power feed, but we'll follow it up and see what it goes to. And you can see that our solenoid goes to fuse 23 at 10 amp. 
um, left side of engine compartment. So we could pull this 10 amp fuse, pop a fuse uh, um, loop in there, fuse buddy loop, and do um, a quick amperage measurement and do the bi-directional to turn it on. And I think we're going to do that, actually, because um, I really don't feel like crawling under this car. All right. Forgive me, guys. I, you know, these tablets, they, they, they hate my fingers. All right. Let me go back here. Hold on. All right. So I'm just going to make a quick note that that white red. So what we've got is we're looking for fuse number. Oh, what was it? 23, 10 amp. And that is going to be our power feed for our vent control solenoid. Anyways, guys, you get the concept. So fuse 23 is the one we're after. Um, the other wire, um, I'm going to tell you right now, is our control wire. Um, and it's got to be a ground. So it's a switched ground to turn the solenoid on. Real straightforward. Um, there are plenty of videos out there on, you know, how you know, ground side switched uh, solenoids work. Anyways, if you have questions, drop them down. But... One thing I want to show you real quick before we go to the um, fuse, what we're going to do is we're going to drop this fuse buddy that I got from Matco. Um, really nice little tool. Uh, I've li I have I like it. It's kind of my tool review for you. There's who makes it. Electronic Specialties. Um, real cheap. I think we paid 45 bucks for it. I got the 10 amp fuse in there. You can hook your amp clamp right on there. So we're gonna do an amperage measurement. We're gonna command the solenoid on using our bi-directional and we're gonna see what we're getting for amperage. If we're getting, you know, amperage through the solenoid, uh, you know, we're pretty much done right there. But that tells us that, you know, our controls are there um, and that the circuit is capable of pulling amps, um, you know, and we can go down, we'll still go down to the solenoid and test there, but let's, let's do that. Um, let me show you the purge valve on this because that is also bad. So let me show you that quick. So real quick, down and dirty, purge valve lives right up here, right? Disconnected, no command by the computer. I've got the hose to the canister disconnected, so this is hooked right to my vacuum gauge. You can see we're pulling a vacuum we shouldn't be. We have a leaking purge valve. We're done. Needs an evap purge valve. So, moving on to the canister vent valve. Fuse 23 is gonna be this guy right here according to our box. Now remember, there's more than one, there's more than this vent valve on this circuit. So we gotta keep that in mind when we're testing this. So let's plug in our fuse. I'm not gonna show you the setup on this, pretty straightforward. All right, guys, I'll show you. So here's where that splice is. This goes up to our fuse that we're, um, we got our amp loop, our amp fuse buddy in. But if we follow this down. I just ordered both. I got it set up for next one. Sorry, guys, boss interruption. Where the hell were we? Oh, yeah, we were checking where that power feed goes um, from the splice, right? It goes, oh, where the hell did it go? I had it. Right here, keep alive power, pin 62 to the PCM. So if you pluck that fuse, you're gonna lose your keep alive memory. So <clears throat> keep that in mind when testing stuff, okay? Um, nevertheless, doesn't change your approach. Now, I already tried commanding this thing on. I don't hear it clicking. So either way, we're gonna have to go underneath, but I still wanted to kind of try this. So let's uh, let's look at it. Okay, we're in bidirectional. We're in the bidirectional for the canister vent valve. We're gonna turn it on. Oh boy! Hopefully, you guys can see that. Okay, I just commanded it on. And now we're gonna go to our main menu. We're gonna go to our scope. We are on a 20 volt. Oh, we should not be on a 20 volt. Need to change my amp probe. Oh. Probably help if I was actually set up. Let's see, low amp, it's 20. Back, let's see what we're pulling for amperage here. We are pulling nothing. So you can see we're pulling no amps. So, um, 
since we're commanded on, let me go under and tap on it. Oh guys, thank God it lives in a good spot. It's actually not that bad. But this is what I was trying to avoid. So, you have to be concerned that we're not getting power back here or we're not getting a control to this vent solenoid. But you can see the connector right there, right? So, let me tap on this and see if maybe tapping on it will make it click. Either way, we're gonna have to do our checks back here. So do we have a dead solenoid? I don't know. I really don't know, guys. But what we could do is disconnect this and hook a test light into here um, to carry the load. And we should see an amperage on our um, scope. So that's what I'm doing. Guys, I've been at this for the last 10 minutes. I swear somebody glued this thing on to the actual vent valve. I cannot get the connector to release. So either it's that corroded on, or somebody literally took super glue and glued this thing on. Now I did notice, I kinda can feel the connector up here. Uh, the release tang is, you know, all jacked up. So I'll keep trying, I'll keep trying guys, but this is ridiculous. Guys, I've gotta cut I've literally got to cut this wiring. I I don't know. Hold on a second. You know, if you it just it makes my job twice as hard. Look at look look at the super glue that that's super glue, guys. I I mean that connector has been glued on. Somebody glued it on the vent valve. That's the only answer. You know. Yeah, dirt gets in there and stuff, unless it's literally welded in there from corrosion. Anyways, I've got a connector. I've already let my service manager know we're going to need a connector because there's nothing I can do. Um, was somebody in there before? I don't know, but it ain't coming off of there. So I'm going to cut the wiring, and we're going to check it to make sure the rest of the harness is good and we got control and a power feed back there. And, uh, you know... It is what it is, so I'm not the one. I'm not the one who did it. So it's just annoying, you know. Where did all that come from? You know, I spray it down with a little bit of brake clean, and this stuff comes running out of it. it smells just like super glue. Yeah, that's super glue, guys. Anyways, you know, you break something. If you break something, just say something. Get it fixed right. Uh, anyways, guys, I'm gonna have to. I am going to have to cut the wiring to test this the rest of the way. I'll protect it. If my camera dies in the middle of this, you'll know why. I'll fo make a follow-up. All right, guys. I've got a light wired in. Just, in a, just a 3057, all right? Hopefully, you guys can still see. But anyways, i got my amp clamp on, right? And we're just going to go in and we're going to turn this solenoid on. Make sure this thing works. I just hardwired it in right to the wiring, all right? so annoying it's like just if you break you know I, who knows right, let's turn this thing on all right it's on I suppose we can check amperage right away let's go do that let's see what we're pulling for amps and there you go all right I don't know how long it's gonna pulse it All right, there you go. We're pulling 1.9 amps right now, okay? Let's see if our light's lit. Light's lit, and it is bright. So, do we have power? Do we have control? Yes, we do. We're done. This thing needs a new vent valve. Now, I will tell you, we're gonna watch this for a minute here. Now, obviously it didn't blow the fuse, so. <clears throat> Clearly we have the ability to turn this solenoid on. So we're pulling 1.9 amps, that's more than enough. 
Hey guys, I've had it on for a while now. All right. <clears throat> so do we have a short and a harness? It's, you know, certainly it could have been possible, but the fact that that connector is glued, literally glued on the solenoid, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm done guys. I've got to get back to work. This is my only car. It's been way too long in this already, dicking around underneath the car for something stupid. Anyways, hope you liked it. I'll make a follow-up once I have parts. I'm not going to get them today. Obviously, I need a new pigtail for the back. Um, take care.